Alright guys, on today's vlog what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a change to Kiriel's haircut. What she wants to do is to kind of take away this straight fringe, we're going to move it into more of a side fringe. So I want to show you guys how to get that started. And obviously it takes time to grow, but getting it cut with that angle is going to definitely help in that process. Also what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this length off of the back. You can see how it just kind of falls and lays pretty flat right now. So we're going to take it a little bit shorter, bring it up above the shoulders drop it down the front, kind of a long bob feel to it, and uh, it's gonna be really cool. So I hope you guys like it, it's gonna be salon friendly and definitely a good way to go. Also, Brian's gonna be coloring this, so that video will be out soon as well. So there's gonna be some fun color, uh, cutting, and everything else going on in this cut. So here we go with our step-by-step, -step. hope you guys enjoy it. All right, so I know you guys are excited about the live model. So there's our part, so that's our part side, and then I take a diagonal back section from the part down to uh, just off the, the mid crown and then I go down just below the parietal ridge. It's a little bit off center rectangle on the top of the head um, and then I go down center back and then across the occipital bone. So pretty standard sectioning that I normally do on a haircut. Uh, we're working with Curiel's fine hair so she doesn't have a lot of hair uh, at all so what I want to do is create a lot of weight in the bottom but a lot of texture at the same time. So we're going to go through. I'm going to start by using a point cutting technique with my scissor so I'm not cutting a blunt straight line in the back I really want to work that texture and create a lot of movement in this haircut so uh, taking another diagonal forward section and now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna rest the comb on the head so you can see how the head shape shifts how our occipital bone pushes the weight up and then how if I lay it across the crown that angle so that angle is zero degrees that's what I want to create uh, when I elevate the hair here. So you can see that elevation coming straight off of the head. Um, so that's giving me in some places a 45 degree angle. So it's uh, a nice soft bit of weight. And at the very top of that section, we're working at zero degrees uh, coming off of the head shape. So that's gonna be our heaviest point. So I wanna make sure that I don't elevate it lower than that, because if I go lower than that, it's just gonna build up super heavy and uh, it's not gonna have any movement to it whatsoever. But if I go too high, then I'm gonna layer it too much and it's gonna be too weak at the bottom as well. So this is a good happy medium spot uh, for you guys when you're taking your sections. So everything's being overdirected straight back to me. I'm really trying to create more of an even feel to the back layers. But as I get to that corner, there's obviously more over direction because we're rounding the corner. So it starts to push that weight and length forward. Again, using that comb as my tool. So I, as I take my section, I lay the comb across the head to see that angle. Um, it's just a good visual of how the head shape is shifting throughout the haircut. So again, over directing everything back to me and making my cut, keeping that top of the, each section at a zero degree angle. Working my way down the side of the head, taking vertical sections and then just bringing them back to that stationary guide. Um, in the back of the head. I'm trying to keep really clean with my sections. So I'm using the fine teeth of the comb because she's got fine hair, so it's easy to work through it. And it gives me a nice tight tension in the haircut as well. So it's working really well for her hair type. So you can see the movement that the hair now has. It's above the shoulder a little bit. So that was really the goal was to, to get it above the shoulder so that um, it wouldn't be laying so flat across the back. So now we're going to start on the right hand side. The biggest difference between the right hand side and the left hand side is my hand positioning. So now my hand's going to be pointing down. On the opposite side it was pointing up. So uh, like I've said in many videos you want to make sure that you're always combing the new hair towards your guideline. So every section that I take I want to comb that section to the guide instead of pushing the guide 
from where it lives and bringing the guide to the new hair. Um, because if you move the guide from where you want it, it's not a guide anymore um, and you're totally messing up your whole entire haircut. So just going through, still using the fine teeth of the comb, uh, finger angled down, keeping that at a zero degree towards the top of the section and just staying very consistent with my haircut. Uh, working my way through, you can see how that length is getting longer because of the over direction. Um, so I take my next panel down, still working vertical sections. Um, still, that I'll show you right there, that zero degree angle, and everything's coming straight back to me. So uh, no over direction, the, the slightest bit of over direction would be just to the previous uh, panel, previous section, and just working my way through the back. This is why I talk about head shape so much because head shape plays such a role in how the hair is going to fall. So as I'm working my way around that corner, I'm over directing to the same place, but because the head shape is moving away from me now, um, it starts to push the length of the hair longer and heavier. So it's the head shape that's doing everything. I'm just combing everything to the same place. So you really want to be aware of how the head shape is moving. So now we're going to work on that bat, that top rectangle shape that we had. I'm going to work diagonal back parting, and then I'm going to work um, a guideline from the opposite side. So on the part side that you can see there, that's where I take my guide from, and I just connect those two sides together. So my finger angle is slightly, it's following the head shape on the opposite side, and I'm just over directing everything back to a stationary guide in the back. Um, and pushing that weight forward. So now we're gonna work on the fringe. This is what I talked about. Um, there was a straight fringe, so we wanna create an angle. Um, this is something that can't always be done in a day, but we can get it started. So what I'm doing is just shifting the corner of that bang to start the angle. And the one thing I wanna make sure that I don't do is go too deep with bringing more and more hair forward. I don't wanna cut that longer, the longer pieces on top um, if I don't have to. So we're really creating almost like a fake fringe in the front um, for now as, as it grows out. So you can see where I kind of lose the edge uh, towards the top of my finger. That's where it's gonna stop connecting. Um, and some of those longer pieces that you see in there as well, I'm gonna leave those for the dry cut because I don't wanna cut into all those long pieces again if I don't have to. So we're gonna blow dry, we're gonna do a flat wrap blow dry using that Ergo paddle brush, the Ergo blow dryer. Drying it nice and quick, uh, a little bit of leafing to add a little bit of volume to it. Um, never really want a flat dry. And then we're gonna go through with our Vibra Straight iron and iron out the hair, just keeping it right where it lives. All right, you can see the polish and the shine on the hair. Um, that really comes from just the blow dryer. Um, there's barely any product in this because Brian's gonna be going in and adding color. So I didn't wanna put a lot of um, product on the hair because I really want that pink color that we're gonna put on there to stick. So just going through, um, now I'm gonna go through with a vent brush. This just kind of airs out the sections a little bit. So I like to use a couple different things. I like to go in with a comb to get um, more tension on the hair and more separated sections. Then I go through with the brush. Now we're gonna do some slide cutting in the fringe area. This is connecting all those disconnected pieces. So the longer pieces that I was talking about before that I didn't wanna pull over into the section because I don't wanna cut them super short. There's no reason to. And I like having some of those kind of longer pieces that separate the bangs anyways. So we go through just using some slide cutting techniques and connecting that top fringe and into the side of the haircut. Now we're going to go through, I just want to lighten up the sides because we've actually kept a lot of weight in there. So I'll just go through with a little bit of tease cutting. Not a lot because she does have fine hair, so I don't want to um, cut into it too much. But I do want to create that kind of texture and separation in the haircut. Um, this is something that you won't know you want to do until it's dry because you don't know how the density is going to play out from the haircut that you created. So just... Uh, Go through, you may not have to do this if they have really fine hair. If they have really thick hair, you probably would have done the wet cut a little bit different, but you also would do a lot more of that tease cutting. Now I'll go through with my Donald Scott carving comb and I'm just gonna um, kind of piece, add some pieciness to the edges uh, right in that corner area. So I just pinch the hair and cut it with the carving comb. 
and that is the end result. So now what Brian does, he goes in, he's going to color it. This video will be coming out, but I want to give you guys a little teaser of that. So he's using a couple different pink colors. He puts one on the root and one on the end. Um, and he, so I just wanted to speed that up and show you guys that part because I know you guys are going to want to know um, that it's the most exciting part of this whole hair thing. So just going through and he paints the, again the one color on the base and then the, the other color on the ends. Look for that video. As soon as it's out, I will put the video link in the description, but make sure that you subscribe to our videos because that's the best way to get the alert when this video comes out. So it should be out in a, in a few days. So now this is the end result. You can see that kind of soft pink on the ends, the darker pink at the root, and uh, just finishing off with a little Bricado hairspray. And that is pretty much the end look. I hope you guys like it. If you do like it, make sure you share this video with your friends and also subscribe to our channel so you get all the latest alerts um, as soon as the videos come out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks. All right, guys, if you like that haircut, make sure you hit the like button, hit the share button. This is the end result. Brian colored it. So I hope you guys like the cut. I hope you can use it. Make sure that you check the description below because as soon as Brian's color video is done, you'll see the description or the, uh, like. the link in the description. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.